Good morning, folks, and welcome back to Pool School. In today's episode, I am going to teach you how to clean a Stay Right cartridge filter. So let's get going. Okie dokie. Before we get started, I want to remind you to continue to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And also share it with your friends who maybe have pools, maybe even co-workers who are looking to save a buck or two servicing their own pool. All right, before we get started, I want to talk to you about the tools that you're going to need to clean your cartridge filter. Again, we're talking about a Stay Right cartridge filter. If you have a Hayward or Pentair cartridge filter, those two are quite similar in the way they, they go together and the cartridges inside. Uh, the Stay Right's a little different, but if you have a Hayward or Pentair filter, please look at my videos on how to clean those cartridges because I have a separate video for each of those. This one's on the Stay Right. It goes apart, it comes together a little bit different. It doesn't have a belly band and it also has a little bit of, comp, uh, bit of a different uh, cartridge configuration. There's only two. There's a large one and a small one. You'll see when we get to it. But I want to talk to you really quickly about what you're going to need to have with you in order to do this right. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to have right here, you need a hose. Duh. So you're going to need a hose. You're also going to need a nozzle. Now this is my favorite nozzle. This little and this brass piece right here. I got both of these at like uh, Lowe's and you can get them at Home Depot also. This just gives you a good pressure in the nozzle. So this will attach and I attach this to it because there's no way to shut that off without having to go back to the hose bib. So I use this so that way I can shut it on and off from right here. People have asked me, hey, can I use a pressure washer? Personally, I've never used one, and my thought and concern would be that if you get the pressure too high on a pressure washer, I don't know, you know what their pressure is, but I know it's really high, uh, you might damage the cartridges and, and maybe tear the fabric on the filters. So this is sufficient for me, and it's very cheap. I mean, both of these things together probably cost me less than 10 bucks. All righty, so you're gonna need that. And then you're also going to need a pair of channel locks like this. And I like these because they really, I use these all the time. And um, I can also use them as like a mallet to just tap things. So if you don't have a pair of these or you have something different, you might want a rubber mallet. Uh, and you'll see the use of that and what I do this for. Anyway, so that's, I use that. I keep a screwdriver just in case I need to pry anything off. I also have a bottle of heavy duty silicon uh, lubricant. Notice it says industrial strength. Uh, I would not recommend WD-40, just the regular one, but I know they have a industrial strength one. As long as it's industrial strength, you will be fine. And then lastly, but definitely not least, I always like to have a pair of gloves because I don't like handling the fiberglass of the outside shell of the cartridge filter um, with bare hands because you can get that fiberglass into your fingers once the fiberglass gets old and uh, it's really a pain and it's irritating and then you rub your eyes and it's a mess. Anyway, so that is what you need. So let's get over to the house and let's see what the filter looks like. Okay, so I am at my friend's house and the first thing I am gonna do before I show you the filter is go to the time clock for the pool system and make sure that there's no way this filter is gonna turn on. So it's off and notice the on tab is way up here so it's not gonna turn on. And then I'm gonna head over to the pool, which in this case is a bit farther away than the time clock. Usually it's right by the pool, but this one's a little bit further away and I'm gonna override even the time clock with a little switch. Okay, so this is the Stay Right cartridge filter. And one of the things I like about the way we configured this one is the drain right here. We don't have a plug, so all I have to do is turn this and it'll drain the water out, which is really nice. I'm gonna do that in a second, but before I do anything, I'm again gonna make sure that this pool has no chance of going on. So there is the switch that I know overrides that time clock. So that thing does turn on, that just shut the power off so it can't get to the filter, so it can't turn on by accident. And then what I'm gonna do, before I start unscrewing everything, is I'm gonna loosen the pressure relief valve. Can you hear that? That's, that's air coming into the system. And then I'm gonna open this. And this again, if you're, yours might be a little different, it might have a drain plug then, th th there. Then you're gonna need a pair of channel locks like I had to unscrew that. But this again is, I gotta figure out how it, let's see, this way. I turn that. And that means I'm draining out the water. So when I take this thing apart, 
this lid will come off without a bunch of pressure in there and it won't be a ton of water in there that'll splash everywhere. So you'll notice there's some dirty water coming out of there. All right, so I'm gonna let this do that and I'll be right back and I'll show you how we take this off and, and separate the two halves. You'll notice it's a little different than the Pentair and the Hayward because the Hayward and Pentair have a belly band all the way around. This has these little things that you can actually unscrew by hand, but I'm gonna get my gloves on to make sure that I don't get any fiberglass into my hands because you'll notice, you see all those little sprinkles and sparkles there? That's fiberglass and get that in my hands and it's just nasty. Alrighty, so I have my gloves on and this is pretty much drained and I got my hose and everything all set up and now I can start taking this apart. Again, you don't need any special tools unless these are super over tight, but they pretty much, you should be able to just unscrew them like that. So what I'm gonna do is I just go around and unscrew these so that they're somewhat loose and you'll notice how it's coming off. And then you look right down in there. See that little slot? I just slide that up. Gotta get it far enough away so that it gets free of this this part right here and then I'll just kind of once it's far enough away I need to go a little bit further this doesn't need to come completely off this does not need to unscrew completely and it just comes off like that see how that works so when you put it back together that piece sorry this little tab right there slides down into that tab and it sits in there and then this will screw back in and this will snug back up. I'm not gonna wa have you watch me do all of these. I just wanna show you how this is done. So you basically do that with every one of these and put these somewhere where you're not gonna lose them. And it really doesn't matter which order that they come on and off on, they all kind of fit the same. So they don't have to go, okay, this one goes here and this one goes here. So I'm gonna take all these off and then I'll come back and show you what we've got as I pull it apart. Remember, I've got the pressure relief valve open and I've got the drain valve open so there's no water in there right now which means there'll be no pressure when I break that free. Okay so I've got all of these unscrewed now my pressure's all set I got my gloves on and now I can just pull this apart and again it comes off pretty easy just like that okay careful when you set this down that you don't set it down on the pressure relief valve so just kind of set it down like that and you'll notice there's an o-ring in here right here all right, I'll get a close-up of that when I put it back together. But that you're gonna to wanna to hose out and lubricate, okay? But I am gonna have you pay attention to the way this filter is set up. So I'm gonna bring my camera a little closer so you can take a look at it. Okay, so here is the filter, the cartridge is inside. You'll notice that a couple things. Number one, see these arrows right here? These actually should be lined up because that allows this to seat in there properly when you put it all back together. But honestly, I really like this filter because it's been literally I think two years since I've cleaned this and it's kept their pool crystal clear for two seasons. And they had a whole lot of construction going on with all these houses over here. So it's done pretty good. But these two will come out and then we'll hose them off. And then I'll show you about putting it back together. And there's one thing we're gonna have to do inside of this before we put it back together. But we'll get to that afterwards. Before I actually go over and start cleaning the cartridges, I want to show you the inside of this filter. Again, there's a very specific way the holes line up on the, um, <clears throat> sorry, on the manifold. So that's why those particular cartridges will set respectively the smaller one on this and the larger one on this. And there's a hole in those cartridges that they go right into. But notice the dirt in there, which I'm gonna grab a hose. I'm gonna hose all that out before I put this thing together. I'm gonna to clean this off. All right, this can actually come off if you want to, but I'm just gonna hose it off and clean it. And then I'm also gonna hose off that O-ring completely, and maybe even just some of the sides and everything. And then I'm gonna lubricate that with the industrial strength lubricant. But I will show you all that later. Let's go clean those cartridges. Alrighty, there are my cartridges. And I've got my hose all set to go. You can see it over there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on time lapse so you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. But what I'm basically gonna do, I'm gonna come over here and show you real quick. Basically what I'm gonna do is I am going to spray, I've been honest, I'm gonna do basically half of these at a time. I'm gonna start over here and clean this one, half of it, and then I'm gonna come over and do the same thing on this side. But when I do it, I'm gonna do it in an up and down motion and use these bands as a guide, okay? So I'll go this side and get it nice and clean. 
and then I'll come back, dropping down to the second layer, or the second panel here, and go across. So these bands act as a guide for me so I know what I've cleaned, and it's pretty easy to see. You notice how dirty these are? Pay attention so when you see when it's done, you'll notice how much cleaner they are. It won't be perfectly clean compared to brand new ones, but it'll be substantially better. So once I do that, then I'll turn them and do the others the exact same way, the other side. But I'm gonna put it on time lapse so you can see me do it without having to sit there for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 40 minutes while I do it. Okay, so I am done with these so far. And I wanted you to notice the insides. If you watch the time lapse, you'll notice that I was spraying water on the inside of these also. The reason I do that on this particular model or, or this particular type of cartridge filter, the Stay Right, is because first I can get in there. And second of all, there seems to always be dirt in there. So I just want to give it a good, you can't really see a lot, but you see it's brighter white in there now. I just like to kind of clean it off. Now what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to put it back on time lapse. I'm going to do a one quick around with all it, the whole thing. And then I'm going to go back, clean out the, the canister for the filter, and then we'll put it all back together. Okay, the cartridges are all done. And now I'm going to put them back together. Oh wait, you know what, let's talk about something. I've been asked before by people, how do I know when it's time to change the cartridges in my filter? Well. These bands are theoretically supposed to give you a hand with that. They hold the, the, uh, the uh, accordion folds of the thing together, but when these bands start to really break and when they're completely gone, chances are it's a good time to change your cartridges. Um, and that's easy to do. I'll do a video on when to change your cartridges and how to find them online so you don't have to pay like a crazy amount of money for them. The other thing though is, even with the bands, I've seen the bands break within the first year or two and the cartridge is fine, you really want to inspect the cartridge and just kind of look at the fabric. If it looks pulpy, and again, look at what it looks like when you first got them, and you can see the very fabric, it looks like a fabric, right? But then as time goes on, as years go by, you'll see this start to get more pulpy and pulpy, and um, that helps you too. But again, I'll do a full video on the things to look for to tell you when it's time to change those cartridges and get new ones. But let's go back to the filter and let's clean it out, lubricate it, and put it back together. So I'm back at my filter and I've got a hose. Thankfully it was just long enough to reach it. And what I'm going to first do, I'm going to hose all this out inside and it'll drain out here. And then I'll also hose off the O-ring and kind of the, all the little areas that look dirty. And I'm going to hose this off too. This is just a little pre-filter and we'll just take care of that right now. So I'm going to hose all this off and clean it all out. Notice I still have my gloves on. Sometimes I have to kind of use my hand and just help that debris get through. Now if you have just a drain plug instead of one of these spigots, it actually will drain out faster. This is a little harder because you got to blow everything through. And you can see how it gums up and I had to blow that out, so that helped it out a bit. Now I'm cleaning off this O-ring. If you want to pull it off to do that, you can. Um, and if you do that, I would just take it over to your pool and, rent and clean it off and then put it back on. But if you do that, hose off the rim that it fits in so that there's no debris in there. 
and I tend to pay attention which way I pull it off. I, I'm, under, I'm told that it doesn't matter which is the top and the bottom, but also when you do take this into the pool, don't pull on it really hard and don't get crazy with this. I'm going to go over there and do that. I'm not going to have you watch it and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and I am going to put this back on the rim that it came off of. And again, it's a little bit tricky because it's big and kind of floppy, but it should go on there fairly easily. Remember, I also hosed off that rim around it so that there was no dirt on it. Now, I can take my heavy duty silicon, in, in, uh, sorry, industrial strength silicon spray and spray that with the spray, spray that O-ring. So what I'm gonna try to do is lube that O-ring. One other thing, if you did have a drain plug instead of this, that kind of spigot that I talked to you about, then you're going to want to clean that drain plug and clean the area inside the threads of that drain plug that it goes into. And then there's an O-ring on that drain plug. And you're going to want to use this lubricant on that O-ring so that it gives you a good seal. All right, so I've lubed that up pretty good. And now I'm going to set my cartridges in and I'll show you that specific way they go in. Okay, so apparently my phone got a case of the stupids and just didn't record what I was trying to record. It got a little overheated out there. But anyway, I can show you with this diagram how the cartridges go back in and you can see how when I pulled it apart, I mentioned those arrows and those arrows are pointing to the back of the filter. So just remember that the, the arrows on the cartridges that I showed you earlier are pointing to the back of the filter. So that will allow the holes to line up with the holes on the, uh, the, the pipes on the manifold that they go into. So the first picture here, the red circle on top you see is the arrow for the big cartridge. And then the next circle below it, with the arrow in, in the middle of it, is showing how that goes into the um, manifold pipe. So you're just going to have to kind of line it up and just set it down in there. And you'll feel it go in, and you'll know that it, it will set in there just about that way. All right. Once you have the large cartridge in, then you grab your smaller cartridge, the, the, the skinnier one, and you do the same thing. Again, you're looking at the, the top circle, the top red circle right now, and that is the arrow. And you want to line that arrow up with the back of the filter and kind of with the cartridge as well. And again, they might be slightly off, but just kind of use that as a guide and then just kind of turn it slightly until it drops into place and you'll have them all taken care of. So that's pretty much how you put them in. And now that they're in, all I have to do is put the lid back on and attach all the, the clamps and we're good to go. I am going to um, time lapse that so you don't have to sit there and watch me do it for as long as it takes. One thing I want to show you, just real quick, is how those things line up. So you notice how that little piece, that little toggle in there, see that piece of metal? It's straight up and down, it slides right in and fits on there. Now, if that has a washer on it, that washer is going to go on this side. Okay, so now we'll go back to time lapse and I'll tighten those down and give them a little wrap just to snug them in so that they seat in the, in the proper place. So everything is tightened down and I want you to see down here how snug that is, right? There's a little bit of uneven gap, but the idea is to get that snug down there like that, okay? So that thing needs to be snug in there, right? So now I'm ready to fire everything up. I turn back on the time clock box and I've got the override switch off still. This valve is still open and I'm going to close it now that way. Actually, I'm going to leave it open for a second just to kind of drain some water out, then I'll close it. This one I'm going to leave open until water squirts out of it because that's going to help me prime the pump. So we're going to fire it up right now and get her going. 
this might take a second for it to start pulling. There's the water starting to come out. I'm just doing this so it cleans it. And now I'll probably shut it. There's a little bit of dirt coming out still, so I'll just let it flush it out. Oh, nice. Good. So that was water. That was that was dirty water that was stuck inside the pipe. And we're just cleaning it out now, so that's good. All right, so it's clear now, so we'll shut that off. And now you'll notice, you hear that hissing. You hear it? All right. Pump is pulling water. You can tell. Water in there. And up and out. One thing to pay attention to, when I put this lid on, I made sure I did it in such a way that the pressure relief valve had a place to squirt. I didn't want to squirt it all over the pump and everything. This way it's just squirting out onto the concrete over here. This may take a second or two to fill. Remember, I've shut that off. Now if you have just a, a drain plug there, you would have tightened that on. Just hand tight after you've lubed it and cleaned it. And then just maybe a quarter turn, eighth of a turn, a little more just to snug it down. And then once this thing is completely full, I'll know because water will squirt out of that opening right there. So we're going to give it a second here. I want you to see how much time it actually takes. So that way you don't panic and go, oh my word, it's taking so long. That's a little hole for a lot of air to escape out of to fill this entire dome, if you will. Okay, and there it goes. So I actually am not gonna, I did not have, I actually did not have you watch this whole thing fill up because it took close to five minutes for it to happen. So just know that with a little hole like that, it's gonna take a little bit for the thing to fill up. So just be patient and watch for it. As long as your pump has got water in it, then you know it's filling up. Now all I do is I close that down, snug it down, don't crank it too tight so it doesn't drip, and I'm gonna inspect my filter for leaks. Alrighty, so I'm looking around my filter. I'm not going to take you all the way back there. And the top of it, and there are no leaks. So this job is pretty much done. So gang, that is my video on how you clean a Stay Right cartridge filter. I gotta tell you, that filter is rapidly becoming my favorite of all the cartridge filters out there. It seems to work really well and it takes a long time for it to get really uh, dirty and uh, it's actually fairly easy to clean. I think it's a little easier because there's only two cartridges even though they're bigger. Anyway, that's my video on how to do it. I hope it made sense to you. If you have any questions or comments, remember you can always post them in the comment section below this video, or you can email me directly, and my email address is gonna come across the screen down here, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Please again, remember to like and subscribe to my channel and share it with any friends or anyone you know that happens to have a pool and is looking to do the pool themselves and save a few bucks. As always, I wanna thank you for watching, and please remember, we're in the middle of June, we're at triple digits, and it is the peak of swim season. So please, have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids around water. And I will see you next time.